next to a good quality telescope is a laptop, particularly if you are doing astrophotography. So I bought this laptop in 2013. I got it from PC Specialists and I've been pretty happy with it. The external build quality probably isn't the best, but it has been very reliable and I have taken it on quite a few trips around the UK. The specification of this laptop is that it's got an i7 processor, it's got a one terabyte hard drive and it's got eight gigabytes of RAM. I've been pretty happy with it over the years. The external build quality isn't the best, it's a bit plasticky and the trackpad wore out pretty quickly. However, I've noticed over the last couple of years, particularly with Windows updates, it's been getting slower and slower and slower. One of the advantages of having a home observatory is that if you do get a clear night or even a window of a few clear hours, you can whip out the house, roll the roof off and start imaging. Whereas with this old laptop, I found that it was taking me ages to set up and sometimes the laptop wanted to do an update and then it could be an hour before I was able to start imaging and invariably the clouds had come in and that was the end of it for the evening. So it was time to update my laptop. Laptops are a bit like cameras in that you get people devoted to either Canon and Nikon or Windows and Macintosh. And in astronomy it's a particular problem because most applications are written for Windows or Linux. I use Windows quite comfortably, I use it for work, but really, I prefer Macintosh. I much prefer the build quality. I find the reliability a lot better. And while I did experiment with loading Linux onto this laptop very early on, I never really got on with it. It wasn't that satisfactory. Maybe it's because I didn't like K-Stars quite so much as Sequence Generator Pro, which I use for my image acquisition. So I had to make a difficult choice. Should I replace it with another Windows laptop, which I really didn't want to do? or should I try and do something with Macintosh? In 2019, I did treat myself to a new Apple Mac. This is a 13-inch MacBook Air. It's got an i5 processor. There is a half a terabyte SSD in it, and it's got 16 gigabyte of RAM. So it's quite a fast little machine, not, not as powerful as the MacBook Pros, but actually it's got a lot of potential, and it's just really well made very light. The first time I used it really for astronomy was last year when I was down in Devon watching the lunar eclipse. I did have a look at what astronomy programs are written natively for Mac but to be honest I still prefer some of the Windows based software like Sequence Generator Pro which I think is the best acquisition software in my opinion. So I decided to see what I could do in terms of loading those programs that I like that are Windows based onto my Macintosh. I knew that I had to do something to virtualize the software, didn't really have a lot of experience with it, so I looked at a couple of different applications. I looked at VirtualBox, which when I went through the instructions looked a little bit difficult and not particularly user-friendly, bearing in mind I didn't have a lot of experience. Bootcamp I discounted for much of the same reasons, and then I looked at Parallels. And in the end I chose to go down the Parallels route, which I think was a big success. So I'm going to show you what I've done with my Macintosh and just how well it's working for me. The sort of applications that I want to run on my Macintosh is of course Sequence Generator Pro because that is the best acquisition software uh, in my opinion. I need to run all the ASCOM uh, drivers because that runs my telescope. I have a Lunatico Celotech focuser on my scope. For guiding I use PHD2 although I'm aware that there is a Macintosh version of that which I have used with my little portable mount but overall I think it's best to have as many things on one system as I can so I can basically run everything on parallels and I'm going to show you what I've been doing. I can't deny that it was quite a bit of work to get everything functioning. It took me about a day and a half I think from installing the parallels desktop software and then installing all the different applications that I wanted to use and making sure that they would all work together. The main application that I use is Sequence Generator Pro for my image acquisition and I connect my telescope, camera, focuser through that application. I've got it all working now so why don't I boot it up and you can take a look. The one thing that I couldn't get working was my QHY5 guide camera. 
and that stubbornly refused to connect. But I have had a lot of problems with that on Windows 10 before now. I tried changing the drivers out, putting an old driver in, searched all the forums on Cloudy Night, but I gave up in the end. I thought I'd try and get the basics working, and as soon as the cloud's clear, I will have an imaging session. So I'm gonna fire up my MacBook Air and get everything connected. So you can see I've got the Parallels desktop installed here. Double click on that to open it up. Here we go. I had it open so it's just resuming Windows 10 and you can see on my desktop the applications. I've got Backyard EOS, I've got Sharp Cap, I've got Sequence Generator Pro, I've got the ASCOM stuff down here. So let's fire up Sequence Generator Pro. Nice and quick. This should have taken a couple of minutes running on my old Windows machine. You can see I've been playing with it and the next time I get clear skies, I was gonna go on M81, M82 with my EOS DSLR. So here we go, I'll connect. I haven't got the camera connected at the moment. So there's the Celotec focuser. There's ASCOM EQ mod going. And if you listen, so I'll connect it to my mount. I've got the observatory roof closed because it's a bit damp outside today, but you can see it's working. I'm all ready now to do some imaging. If you watched my other vlog, I repaired the posts supporting the observatory roof because I wasn't able to move the roof off because the posts were rotten. But now that's all done, I can observe the first time that I get clear skies. In these days of working from home, at least it means I've got no commute and as soon as it gets dark, I can be straight out in the observatory and imaging. So that gives me a bit more flexibility. I've actually got an awful lot more detail about how I configured my laptop and installed all the different applications, but I thought that maybe I cut that out and put that in a separate blog if anyone's interested in the details, but hopefully I've covered the general principles for you in this blog. If you've enjoyed this vlog, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. Wishing you all astro imaging success and clear skies.